federal judge blocks Biden orders to protect LGBTQ plus people. Several states are fighting against initiatives put in place by President Biden that extends protections in schools and workplaces that are funded by federal money, requiring them to honor chosen genders for sports and restroom use. These guidances from the Biden administration are extensions on the Title VII and Title IX protections. The lawsuit is being put forth by attorney generals from Alabama, Alaska, Arizona, Arkansas, Georgia, Idaho, Indiana, Kansas, Kentucky, Louisiana, Mississippi, Missouri, Montana, Nebraska, Ohio, Oklahoma, South Carolina, South Dakota, Tennessee, and West Virginia. U.S. District Judge Charles Atchley Jr. of the Eastern District of Tennessee put a temporary hold on these extended protections, saying, quote, defendant's guidance directly interferes with and, th and threatens plaintiff state's ability to continue enforcing their state laws. Their sovereign power to enforce their own legal code is hampered by the, in, by the issuance of defendants' guidance, and they face substantial pressure to change their state's laws as a result, end quote. Hmm. This is disgusting, right? I mean, I think that, that um, the thing that I keep wanting to tell everyone of what we're seeing is that the level of transphobia that we're seeing in all of these laws that we're seeing across states, all of these rules that we're seeing across very white states, very red states, are really transphobic, right? So they often talk about how much they love the L and the G, but they don't like the transgender community. And we really, as a community, need to push back against that. Mm -hmm. wow. You know, uh, we have a, a slide here. Of course, it's going to come as no shock of who this judge is. This U.S. District Judge Charles Atchley, of course, appointed in 2020. Who appointed him? President Trump. What a surprise. Uh, of course. It's interesting in terms of the connection of this judge doing it. He basically takes a state's rights position mm -hmm. of saying the states should be able to decide how they're going to enforce and delegate and regulate uh, civil rights. Well, mm -hmm. that's a constitutional issue that is a federal issue. So this federal judge right. appointed by Donald Trump is going to uh, uh, contradict. And who is he also supporting in terms of definition? Justice Clarence Thomas, oh it's of the course exact it same mm -hmm. argument that they're going to take away uh, privacy issues out of the 14th Amendment. And that's uh, it's also it's, it's so important to remember, too, that states rights as a framework was especially used in the United States historically to uphold um, racial segregation and slavery. This was I mean, the power of states rights as an argument is, is you know, centuries old. Um, and has always been a conservative force for for bad. Um, that is, it's it's there. There's federalism is important in a lot of ways, but it is often used for racist and homophobic and transphobic um, rhetoric. And uh, the last point that I would really want to make is is I mean, I'm so happy you brought that up, Al. Is how we were the Obama was stalled <laughs> um, in appointing uh, uh, you know federal judges, right? Um, and Trump had this chance, and he was it's so secretly appointed so many federal judges that it has it, the, the repercussions of this are going to be. We always focus on the U.S. Supreme Court, but at lower courts, this is going to have an effect on us for decades and decades. So we're going to be cleaning up Trump poop. That's right, forever. Mm -hmm. Or, mm -hmm. or if they win, they're going to pile on. And it's going to take decades yep. to, overcome. to overcome. Another reason why because they're life, they're lifetime appointments. That, uh, yeah, th exactly. these are lifetime appointments, and in, and in many situations at lower courts, we do vote for judges. And yeah. So therefore, you know, we have to start eliminating them now before they get this experience, name recognition on the bench, and then later on, they get the experience that they need for being appointed. You know, so. it's interesting if there's somebody at the table whose job gets a lot worse. <laughs> for like yeah. so I know. Uh, uh, and let me show you why. <laughs> this is interesting. We, we've, we've prepared a slide in that long list of laundry list of state <laughs> Attorney Generals, we want to show you this slide. Uh, look at the uh, state's list. There's two notable states that are missing. Is this political? Of course it is. What two states are missing? New York, California? N Texas no, no, no. and Florida. Florida. Texas uh. and Florida are missing. This was a strategic decision mm -hmm. of, of the states that were going to come in to fight. And we have another slide uh, to indicate exactly what has been turned over here. Um, President Biden issued this executive order for LGBTQ Pride Month on June 15th. It was designed to do two things, one of which was to protect LGBT principally children, and, and Orlando has already told us, there just seems to be uh, this, this 
fervent desire of, we're okay with the L and we're okay with the G, but the T, uh, not so much. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And he takes that a step farther in his executive order to protect and um, uh, do it on a federal level. And then the counter response by these attorney generals is, no, no, states should make all of these decisions. Well, why is that? <laughs> it's a constitutional protection, and that's what he's extending the executive order on. Right. And then the proof of that is the politics that you see Florida not participating and Texas not participating. Wow. And there's two states that lead this entire structure. <laughs> Florida. That is Governor DeSantis <laughs> and Governor Abbott. Wow. But they are noticeably absent. Wow. Yeah. So wow. it is clearly. clearly you know, clearly. of the states that are listed throughout this entire you know, group of what we're obviously not you know, agreeing with, there's one that sticks out like a sore thumb, and that's Arizona. Mm. And the reason why Arizona sticks out to me is because just recently, if not about a week or two ago, there was a nice little brief news flash that you are now no longer allowed to videotape the police when they pull you mm. over. That's just one little Example. thing. Wow. Uh, you word. know, you know and, but here's the thing. All the other states are going, oh, they're doing that? We can do that too. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, one of the things <laughs> Not that good. Uh, uh, was disturbing when this, uh, when the, uh, it suspended you know, it, but this is not finished by any stretch. Um, um, it, it's going to be appealed and it's going to be pushed along and the, and the White House is going to continue to fight over it. But one of the things that was really disappointing to me on this news is what happens to gay conversion therapy? Because it comes back onto the table. Mm -hmm. This was designed by the president to prevent and eliminate gay conversion therapy through mm -hmm. his executive order. Now, through this, Mississippi or uh, Texas or Florida right. or whatever state can go, no, 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 gay conversion therapy is completely okay. I, through right. the interpretation right. of yeah. uh, what this federal judge has done. Oh, this right. is a really important point because the, the kind of framework of parental rights in particular, this is, I feel like this is certainly coming, has lar will largely be about um, conversion therapy, right? Because mm -hmm. that's what parental rights, in, in the two, uh, 2016 GOP uh, a platform, right. parental rights essentially stood in, in, in place of, parent, of, of conversion therapy, of permitting, per that is the parents, you know, a space to decide for their child whether they should be put into conversion therapy. The kind of framework around parental rights is going to be really dangerous for... That is the legalization yeah. of child abuse. A hundred percent. That is yeah. the legalization of child abuse. Exactly. And it's interesting oh. to me, one other thing that I think is really significant that uh, surprises me on the apathy in the LGBTQ community is we all celebrated uh, the Bostock decision. And when the Supreme Court ruled on Bostock versus uh, Clayton County, the interpretation was the Supreme Court <laughs> said that LGBT rights are protected, LGBTQ Americans are protected in existence of existing civil rights. Mm -hmm. Now there's been a long argument of which I have disagreed with that we need the Equality Act because the Equality Act spells out exactly protection. And why leave it to other vaguer definitions mm -hmm. and assume that it would? And the reason we all celebrated Bostock, in my opinion, is the Supreme Court said, no, no. And especially with the Chief Justice saying, no, these protections are there. This contradicts that. Right. Mm -hmm. Because what is happening is the federal judge says, no, that federal protection is not going to be protected because the states have the right to make that decision. Mm -hmm. So this ultimately is probably my worry, I'm sure your worry, is it's going to go back to the Supreme Court. This challenge now of, of Biden's executive order is going to challenge and challenge, and mm -hmm. then it's going to get back to the Supreme Court. The exact same Supreme Court that said in Bostock that we are protected mm -hmm. for civil rights, other civil rights, mm -hmm. or, uh, you know, legislation that is on the books, now we have a new Supreme Court. And we have a difference in vote five okay. and a difference in vote six. Are they going to rule the same way as on Bostock? Well, I, I bet they won't. Right. Well, and the scary part is that they've always supported the legal precedents, right? When a decision has been made, they've never gone back. Yeah. And so I think what was oh, and what so happened in the last couple of Roe, <laughs> right? What was right. so shaking with Roe is that that has been ransacked, right? Mm -hmm. And so when that has now been done, I think that it's the creation of really feeling unstable, right? Not just as a community for us, but as a country, right? Mm -hmm. This important institution that has always been able to depend on the stability of being able to 
issue rulings that, are, that become longstanding and they're done now are back up for debate and yeah, in jeopardy. Absolutely. So oh, no. Orlando, uh, to, to close our conversation on this, on this federal ruling, I just have to ask you from your voice at SAVE and Nadine's at Equality Florida and Kira's at the task force and the HRC and GLAAD, beyond it must be incredibly frustrating what you're watching. How, how do our principal LGBT organizations that are fighting for our rights, how do we grab LGBT America at the shoulders and Florida and South Florida at the shoulders and shake them into this is what's going on? Right. How right. do we do that? Well, the silver lining of the Don't Say Gay Bill is that people were re reawakened. People are like, we've got to start fighting again. We've got to come back. I've seen people come back into the movement who decided to sort of, you know, after same-sex marriage equality was passed, to just call it, a, you know, that we're done, right? To wave their flag and say that we were done. So I say that that's the only silver lining is that we brought people back into the movement and people are being reactivated and young people are pulling up their, you know, their, their moment and saying they want to be involved as well. So that's the silver lining. I love the activism. I hate the reason why we're having to be this active, um, but it is a moment for us to, to regain our, our, our power. So, will it be enough for us? I don't know. We will see. We'll see at the voting box. <laughs> LGBTQ plus news is vital for our community and for the broader world as a whole. We have enough enemies at Fox News. Tucker, Sean, and Lara are loud. We need passionate allies. Happening Out Television Network, Queer News Tonight, and It's Happening Out are literally out of the closet and into the headlines. Our community needs your support. Like this broadcast and subscribe now to ensure the growth of the entire LGBTQ plus community.